Hello, welcome to today's screencast. Our focus is going to be on uh, the next part of projectile motion. We're going to have a look at this idea of the Bernoulli principle. So last lesson, we had a look at specifically um, projectile flight paths. So we had a look at uh, parabolic and non-parabolic flight paths. We had a look at uh, drawing uh, free body diagrams uh, in relation to projectiles in motion. Uh, then we also had a look at this idea of a, a parallelogram of forces, working out our kind of resultant force or a net force. Um, uh, from those diagrams so what we have to do now and I kind of mentioned it uh, in the last screencast is that uh, as well as kind of uh, looking at the parabolic and non-parabolic flight paths we have to have a look at this idea of a lift force okay so so far we've had a look at particularly air resistance and weight now we have to have a look at is kind of how do objects um, lift okay and, and the, the, the person behind this was a physicist called Bernoulli and I'll give you a little bit of background on him in a second uh, and he had a look at his idea of lift force now what we have to be able to do is have a look at how the discus javelin and ski jumper uh, get lift okay finally we have to have a look at this kind of idea of a downward lift uh, looking at F1 racing cars and track cycling now what I would ask you to do Don, in today's screencast we can have a look at the idea behind the pr principle of the Bernoulli effect and we're going to look at just the discus then when we go into a uh, kind of lesson we'll have a look at applying it to a couple of other examples and then looking at the opposing uh, kind of nature of a kind of a downward lift force so that's a focus so I'll look there let's give you some background so uh, as I said uh, Bernoulli was a physicist and basically he did kind of an experiment looking at airflow and pressures and what he did um, if you imagine now he had a, a big fan okay which blew airflow into a venturi meter which I'll put onto here now what happened when he did that uh, as you can see, as it went through the first part of the Venturi meter here, okay, because there was more space, it was considered there that the, uh, the, the velocity of the air was slower, okay, so it had a lower velocity of airflow. And then when it went down to the tunnel area here, where it was kind of narrow, it kind of got squeezed through, so the airflow was faster. And it came through here, and the airflow got slower again when there was more space in there. Now, that would probably be common sense, okay? But the big finding uh, at the time was that when th the kind of uh, airflow velocity was high, e.g. fast, there was actually a low pressure, okay? And on the op opposition to that, when uh, there was a low velocity, uh, e.g. here and here, there was a high pressure. Now, this causes, this is a big, big kind of thing with regard to kind of uh, sporting examples. Uh, it's really important we have an idea of this. And Bernoulli's principle basically stated that air moves from an area of high pressure to low pressure, causing lift. Now, we understand this principle of uh, gases moving from an area of high pressure to low pressure from gases exchange. Exactly the same principle with regard to air, okay, in this situation. So, high pressure to low pressure causing lift. So, what we have to have an understanding of to really make sure we get this right is we need to make sure we remember that when, the, when air is traveling fast at high velocity, the pressure is in opposition to that, it's low and uh, if it's, it's traveling slowly uh, as it was here and here uh, there's going to be a high pressure okay so that's just something to keep in our head uh, to make sure that's what was found from the uh, experiment uh, and then what we have to do is try to uh, get this principle in our heads by applying it to specific sport and examples so let's have a look at that now then uh, application to sport so if we start off, um, the key things that we have to consider when we're applying it to sport, they can gain lift to two things. So if we are doing sporting actions, a specific sporting actions, and in particular here we're looking for non-parabolic flight path actions, uh, the two three key factors uh, that affect this are the angle of attack. Okay, so remember we talked about the optimal angle of 45 degrees. Now in, in today's, it would be a bit lower than that, but you know 45 degrees would be the maximum height it could be at. And then uh, if it goes any higher than that, it will stop to it, it will not have the correct same effect of lift and increasing our horizontal distance also there are certain aerodynamic designs within objects for example uh, racing cars for example um cyclists that cause this kind of uh bernoulli's lift principle okay so let's have a look then let's get our first example see if we can apply this to uh, the discus okay so we're going to focus on the first thing we're going to have a look at the first factor affecting uh kind of the bernoulli principle or lift we're going to have a look at angle of attack so we've got discus uh, as our example and it's below 45 degrees we'll be looking at there so 
Let's have a look. So if we look here then, um, I've kind of put the start up very slowly. So if I just uh, get you to put this bit, direction of motion. Okay, so your direction of motion is going this way. Somebody has let the uh, discus go out of their hand and it's going up this way, as you can see there. Now, what I want you to do is just take a lot, take a, maybe just listen for a second. You don't need to write anything at this point. If you have a look at this way, if the direction of motion is going this way, the airflow is going to go in two paths. Okay, it's going to go, one is going to go at the top here and it's going to go up and around okay in this direction the other is going to go same direction but it's just going to go here now what we have to do when understanding how this principle happens is split the airflow patterns or airflow movement into two and we're basically looking at the fact that uh, the rule behind this is that the air no matter which path it follows whether it goes above the discus or below they have to reach at the same time they have to come to the other side at the same point now this has a really interesting implications for us because we have to consider that two things let's start with the airflow traveling uh, above the discus so as it's thrown airflow above the discus now as you can see here the airflow above the discus has to travel a further distance so you can see here it comes into here and then it has to stop come out and around and go all the way down round to here okay and I, I, I want to keep it to one thing at a time but if you look at here this just goes straight through there so this one has to follow a, a travel a further distance now because they have to meet at the same time the airflow above the discus traveling a further distance means because it's got to travel further, it has to travel faster and as we know if the velocity of the air increases this means the pressure is going to decrease so the air above or well, the airflow above the discus travels a further distance as we can see here, has to meet at the same time, therefore it has to travel at a higher velocity. And this leads to a direct decrease uh, in air pressure. Okay, so as you can see, I mean, if you wanted to do this, you can see it slightly on this diagram here. That when it is going faster, you can see the three lines that you're drawing here are slightly closer together. And that will symbolize the fact that it is going faster um, in these bits here. Okay, so if we go on from there then, okay, so that gives us our first bit. So now what we see is we've got low pressure air traveling above the discus now what you hopefully you'll start to see now is we have to now have a look at this next bit so let's have a look at the airflow below the discus so if the you know you're looking here compared to the air above the discus the air below the discus has to travel a shorter distance okay now that means that it has to travel at a lower velocity now because the velocity is lower that means the pressure is higher because it's got more space to work in in these areas here. So it's a higher pressure. It can put more, it can press down into these, uh, to, on, towards the discus. Now, as you can see, now what this means is, now we know that our principle behind diffusion in gases, and in this case, we're going to have a look at air. We know that um, air travels from an area of high pressure to low pressure. So what we've got now is we can see that the air traveling at kind of um, higher pressure, which is below the discus, moves to an area of low pressure which is above the discus which causes a lift and then allows the discus to then propel forward and go in that non-parabolic flight path so if i put that down onto here now what happens because there's a, a kind of high pressure below it and low above it this causes a pressure differential or a difference in pressures and this means as i said before the air moves from high pressure to low pressure now this is the key point here because this leads to a lift force which will then directly increase our horizontal distance okay in a non-parabolic flight path now look this bit here in increasing horizontal distance now look I, I it's a luxury item to say that it causes a non-parabolic flight path but because this uh, is the angles right and the weight is right of the um, kind of discus it gives it that chance for the air to lift it unlike the shot put so we see that now and we see this idea now that's a non-parabolic flight path and the reason why lift force takes place is because air resistance is greater than weight and again this is a luxury item if you want to put that in uh, weight has less of, an, less of an influence when the Bernoulli principle is applied so ultimately if you look at it from the start we've looked at where the pressure is low look to where the pressure is high below this causes a lift and this allows um, 
uh, an increased horizontal distance so that the discus can go further okay and the these bits here are just to really cement your knowledge and maybe just think you know do, do i get that do i understand it i look at this and think right you know with your core now it's really important that you kind of get this as a kind of an idea the, the only factor affecting uh projectile motion we looked at here is, is the kind of angle of attack or the, within the bernoulli principle look at the discus which is below 45 degrees i mean actually it can be as low as 17 degrees by the time the lift force has taken place it built it brings it up so what you have to do then i would suggest your cornell notes need to be segregated into airflow above the discus and then your questions will be based around this airflow below the discus based around this and make sure you have some uh, uh, some additional questions on on these areas here to make sure you've got it right and in the lesson we can have a look at this idea of javelin and i'm sure you can think it's very similar just obviously a different implement or a different projectile um very similar, exactly the same principle. Uh, and then we have to have a look at a really interesting idea behind um, the, the kind of design of Formula One cars that actually causes a downward lift force, according to Bernoulli, okay, which stops the kind of, uh, when it goes around corners, it stops it from lifting up. Okay, so we'll have a look at that in lesson. Uh, please make good notes of this. Thanks very much.